uh, wait a little bit, I guess, for a couple of people to pop on. And if not, I didn't really advertise this live feed. So uh, only on uh, Facebook groups, airbrush groups, uh, about an hour ago, I decided if I was going to do something like this, you know, I've been doing a lot of live feeds on on um, Facebook. So I said, let me give something to the YouTube channel here. So hello there. How you doing? Stuart. It's a Stuart. Uh, and names disappear as quick as they pop. They don't stay up, the comments. But anyway, um, this painting was done on a live feed, which was, uh, get that shine off there. Hold on a minute. I guess I can't. It's right here. Hold on. Yeah, whatever. It's not in the. It's not on my thing. It's on the camera. On the. Okay. Um. So, this was just about finished, and everybody saw it. <clears throat> I didn't post the finished picture because, when you're not happy with something, as you know, the artist making it, you've got to, uh, you know. Oh, it's Fred. How you doing, Fred? <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know if you saw this one, Fred, this particular live feed, but I had a little, little tiny things that were not right with this, and I just had to uh, work on it. So, I decided to shave off some of this, uh, do the cockpit over that was just all muddied up and it wasn't good to my liking. The cockpit is, is pretty simple if you keep it neat, but it, it didn't have that in there. It was more almost like the black gun on it over spray. So it was kind of not to my liking and whoops. And so, and I lost, uh, the jet can be fixed very easily because it's black. Toby, great. I'm glad you got to see that I was going on. Um, so it's a repair. Um, you were talking, Toby, about, you know, we were talking about making mistakes and all that kind of stuff. Well, here we go, you know. Um, I wasn't happy with this. And as I was just saying to Fred that um, it's got to look more like this. You know, this is the reference picture. This got a little bit sloppy. Now, can I fix it? fix it successfully on a live feed. We'll see. If I'm not happy with that, <laughs> I might take the live feed down then because I don't want, I do, do not want uh, something up that is not uh, going to be helpful. But anyway, I think I can do it. So, because you can get color shifts, you can get the blue shift, you know, you can get all kinds of problems. So it's very easy if I just start going in here and start painting the black and then the, the body of the jet will look solid again. You know, I'll, I guess I can zoom in. Yeah, I can zoom in. See that? That was sanding. I took a, a thousand, um, well, it's it's a thousand uh, grit sandpaper. And I, as I sanded away, because it was really, really bad around the, uh, the cockpit right there. And it was like orange where it shouldn't have been and all this kind. So I sanded it. And then as I got away out here further up, I started to, um, hello, Andre, welcome. Cool. Okay, guys. So that's great. We got a few people here watching and that's great. Um, okay. So yeah, circular. I did lighter pressure and lighter pressure. There's a lot of ways to, to fix something. Like I was trying to paint in at one point some clouds, okay, that are the lighter clouds. They're very faint. They're they're like this one right here by my thumb. So what I did is I it was almost by accident trying to remove something here. So I went in with the blue tape, just because it's not real, it's not like my you know 3M tape that has more glue on it. And so you could go in here, if you look real close, there's a smaller little guy underneath that cloud. It kind of wedges. So I could cut this into a bow, this straight line. I'm going to do it off the camera a little bit here. So, all right. All I did was just take the straight edge of the tape and 
make it curved a little bit. So I could do that by going under that cloud. Now I take another piece. Let's see, what shape is this? And I'll go the opposite way, just slightly. I know you can't see the cutting. Sorry for my hands blocking, but all I did is just curve it again. But this is a real little guy, so I'm just going to get in there and leave an opening like that. Okay, and I'll zoom in on it. Yes, Brazil is in the house. <laughs> That's great. All right, so your work is phenomenal. You're really, you're really knocking it out of the park. So I'm just gonna, I hold this. Uh, I gotta zoom in here. Okay. I'm just gonna erase a little bit in the tape. A little pressure, but not a lot. And I know it's a different color now, and I might have to miss over it and everything. So now I have the littler cloud underneath the bigger cloud and zoomed in where I still have a work to do. It's kind of grainy, so let's back out. All right, but so now we got the color I want without a color shift of a few clouds that are out in the uh, area where you just saw. So let's see if I can do that again. What I'm doing with the with the cutting, let's see. <clears throat> protect the painting first, and this way I can show you what I'm doing with the cutting. Okay, so I have my little cutting mat here, the tiny one. The whole desk is a cutting mat, but it's covered right now. And all I was doing was just, let me look at that cloud. Okay, so I got another cloud that, I can even do this. I can even open up, instead of getting two pieces, and I could do something like that. It's just a stencil, right? So now I have that. So cutting mat away protect the paper with the painting with the paper under the cutting mat. That might be a little fat, so um, I could put it towards the edge right over here, off the painting a little bit. And it doesn't matter if it, I'm gonna take it over to the edge more like that. That would probably look better. Push it down good and just erase through the shield. They have eraser shields, you know that are metal and uh, pressing a little hard here. Like I said, I can always spray back over this to knock it even back further. Okay, so that one's a little bit lighter, but they're, they're, they're nice little shapes and they are serving their purpose. This is a little speckle here that is right on. Um, first, I'm gonna try to just take my repair color and maybe, maybe just hide that because it's opaque. If it doesn't hide, then I'll deal with that, you know, after. Uh, so taking this sandpaper, here's a blue shift here. It's very ugly. Very ugly. The jet can be fixed very easily, but I even started to lose. I just lost some of my yellow under here as opposed to, you know, you got a nice yellow. Whoops. <laughs> Okay, I got a little thing stuck on my finger. Okay, so I got a really nice yellow under the, the uh, where the cockpit is, and I lost it in the painting. These are very nice cuts. I lost the niceness of the sharpness. If you're gonna paint it, especially a jet, you know, you gotta get that. You know, that's what I'm going for. Look at that little outline around the whole thing of the glow of, I don't know if the photograph is doing that or if I have to put it in. Uh, but the main thing is it's got to be accurate, you know. I, that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so sandpaper on this blue shift. As soon as you spray over a darker, sorry guys, zoom out. As soon as you spray over something that is uh, darker with a lighter color, you get that blue shift. Okay. If I really botch it up, I can take out the whole bottom. I can protect the jet and go back to the board. That's another way to fix stuff. So right now, I'm just going to clean that up. You can even go as far as taking what I did for the cockpit 
<clears throat> is I took, uh, this is clay board. I took Windex on a Q-tip very carefully, and I just, you know, get rid of some of it, squeeze it out. And then you can go in here, okay, right in here, and you can really take out, you know, some mess making it bright like that. But I got to be careful because I, I end up getting an edge. I don't really have any edges, so I got to be careful. But that's what I did with the cockpit. I did something like that and then cleaned it up, but, you know, going back in. I even used an X-Acto knife to kind of uh, take the side of the blade, and I went like this. And I went and I scraped, you know. You can only go in one direction like that. See that clean line? Well, I worked that out till it was bright white. And there's no, there's really no grooves or anything on the cockpit. It's pretty much, it's clayboard. It might have a little raised area right here. Or just take the side of the blade. Whoops. You've got to find out which way the blade wants to go too. And kill, you know, to my finger, I feel a little bit of a, a lump but I also cut a little too deep and I don't like that I like it where right here you can't feel it you can't feel any cut marks there here I cut a little too deep that's what I hate about frisket so what a mess right this is uh can the painting come back to life you know can it do make me a happier person obviously this was a cutout to test my white to say you know, about the brightness of this white, and this white was whiter than the board. So by cutting that out, I found out, you know, of course, this has overspray on it now. But, but anyway, this isn't a very good print. Um, next time I'll use the matted paper. This is kind of a shiny matted paper, and I don't like it. But anyway, this is a real photograph. <clears throat> These are copyright free images from a website. So um, that makes it good. And what I'll do is I'll paint the sunset into the cockpit, but I will um, <clears throat> do the sunset first and hand paint the little guy that is inside there after I get that correct. So it's like if you do, if you have success out here and you're looking at the painting and you say, oh man, I, I did good there, but what happened here? You got to go back to it. And if you, um, you know, if you start messing up and you start feeling like you're going to ruin it, walk away from it. Don't continue because you're going to mess up more maybe at that time. So let me get a couple blades over in my storage bin. New uh, X-Acto blades. Number 11s, just put them off to the side and see if I need it anywhere. I do want to go, th this probably won't matter to you because you can't feel that little bump, but I want to put a new blade. This one, after a while, they, they, they are sharp, but they're not, they're dull in the tip. The little area that we use, that's probably not the tip, meaning this way, you know, not, not the tip where you're gonna go scratching, you know, like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the tip and the side of the blade like that. That's how you sand away stuff. Okay, so that's what I need to do here. And that blade was time to trade it in. It's still good for other things. The blade can be good for cutting, maybe a, a, a photocopy of a black and white, you know, stencil or something, but it's not good for that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna find out, there we go. I'm sanding it down, you might say. And I think, and then you gotta watch out that the back doesn't touch the, the surface of the painting because if you tilt too flat, you got to hold the blade flat, but not to the point where you get that back end hitting. OK, 
Okay, so let's see if I could just go through here and level that out a little bit. Again, this is something you can't see too much, but the technique is still worth looking at. Yeah, it's like a, it's clay, it's clay board, so it's sandable, but some areas are higher than others. It's just a touch thing. I think that's better. I could stay here all day probably working on it, but I just want to make sure that I don't have ridges. That's better. Okay, so I sanded the, I have a nice clean area, and if you saw it before, um, I didn't want to start all that on here, you know, taking all that out. I showed you a little demo of how I use the, the cleaner, you know, the Windex, and I can take the sandpaper and just kind of, with my thumb, bring it across, and then feather sand, like you're in a body shop, you know, where you just kind of take away some of the edge in a circular kind of manner there. Clean, I might as well clean this out in here, just get it out of there. Um, see if I get this nice, but then I start going down onto here, I'll be like, uh-oh. And that was damaged from my fingernail. So you get all this stuff going on, you know, right here. And actually the other one's gone now because I sanded it out. So yeah, it looks really ratty right now, but this is probably some of the better information because we're working on something that we want to throw in the garbage. I didn't want to throw mine in the garbage, but you're working on something that's not, um, not you're not happy with it. You're not satisfied, especially if you're learning from experts like Drew Blair and you know what he, you know, treats every, every uh, area of the painting equally, small areas, uh, you know, he just goes after. So we've got a little um, white going around there, which does work. It, it could be in the photograph and it is kind of mostly, well, not even on the top, it's more on the bottom. It's more over there under that nose piece there. And down there, you see it, whoops, got a little shine going on. So anyway, Okay, so, yeah, if I just take the black out and start cleaning this up, it'll look, the jet will start looking good again. But my problem is this area, right? So this is, I'm, I'm happy with, oops, I'm happy with uh, the little clouds I just did here. I borrowed the paint underneath by erasing out, and I got the, the color without any shifts or anything, and that works for me. So we'll go like that. And we will try, I try to zoom in just a little bit, but let's see. Oh, sure, Andre. It's great to have you on here. I don't know, you know, I don't, well, I don't speak your language. I don't know if you speak English, so I don't know if you understand uh, what I'm saying. And you can... <laughs> If you don't, you, you're just watching and, and watching and enjoying it. Um, but, okay, so clean up on aisle seven, right? A little shaky here. Uh, just kind of get that ick out of there, that messy, ugly. See, it doesn't matter if I hit the jet like that. It's, the jet is black. It's going to be an easy fix. That, you don't, you know, you, don't, you start hitting those areas and it's like not an easy fix. And I'm hopefully I'm going to be successful with this, especially making a video, right? And if I'm not, then I will resort to taking out the sky from probably probably from here down, and then literally it's a lot of work. Uh, I don't know, you know. And then there's other ways that you can do it too, but color shift is a is a real a drag. So let's see, um, for me to start drawing the little man, the little, you know, pilot in here and start freehand, and that's what I'll do later, but I want the sunset in there already. So I know I have a bright yellow or some kind of a yellow. So I'm going to test spray on the side and I'm gonna just lay the yellow um, inside here, waiting 
for any layers of color. It's nice and clean now. And it's mostly not that yellow, see? It's mostly, uh, it's a mixture of like that color and a glow behind him and around the front a little and the back. That was all lost in the dirtiness of overspray. So I'm just gonna put it in. You can put the light color in completely in all areas. I match the color to, to work with me. So let's go outside the cockpit now, further away, a little more air pressure. And now we're seeing kind of an, a, re, a repair of that sanded away. Now this, <laughs> that's gonna be like, uh-oh, shouldn't have made the video. <laughs> so it's still a lighter color. I just don't wanna go too far onto it, you know. Just gonna put it there, same color. The color shift's happening very lightly. But let's just make sure I got some paint coming out. Tip dry. And opaque will hide. Let's let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, so you got um, transparency. And if you have a pencil line such as that, okay, let me zoom in on that. Okay. So what we got here, anybody else? Okay, Kelly, okay, Kelly Singleton. Hi, Kelly. Okay, so, okay, if the pencil line will go away, then you're successful and you're opaque paint. Now that would be like a transparent, just like you can still see it, you know, you still see it. And then you just keep working it. Now, if there's not enough white in this, which I do have a pretty good amount of white. This should go away with many layers. Air dry it. It's the same color, it's not gonna change, but transparency will let you see that forever. Air dry it. It's starting to go away now. Air dry it again. Okay, so pencil line is going away because of the, opa the opacity of the yellow has that white in it. But white is the lightest color, having said that, and takes it will take longer for that to not be seen. Air dry. I did make a real dark mark there too. But I'm, I'm gonna just spray more until it's gone. Just so you know, it can go completely away. This stubborn little guy, I still see it. Mile thick of paint, right? But you get the point. Okay, it's almost gone. I could go on and on and on. Let me show you. It's almost gone. Air dry it. You can see it a little bit. But... It's yellow too, so I could put a little more white in the yellow and that'll be gone. So having said that, let's see there, we get the color shift right away. All right, so inside the cockpit, we have that brighter yellow. The yellow I mixed is probably the inside sun color. There's an outer, there's an outer yellow. Oops, sorry guys, I gotta unzoom. Okay, so this yellow inside the cockpit might be a little stronger. Okay, so do that. I want to bring the yellow back. I'm going to go right a little bit on the plane, the air, the jet, because the plane, the jet's going to come back over the yellow when I repair it. So now I've got my yellow waiting that was lost and all gunked up and stuff. So having said that, let me get a little bit more. I'm gonna dump this out. So this, this whole video is about a painting that looked pretty good on the Facebook Live. But the more I looked at it later and saw some frisket gaps and then my fingernail scratched it. And, and then I realized overspray messed up the cockpit. That's not good enough. The, the cockpit has to be just like this one. And because it's so small, which is, I think I saw Steve Leahy on here. I'm not sure. 
if Steve Leahy, if you go on his, uh, you know, live feeds um, on Monday night at six, you're going to see miniature, super small. That's his, that's his specialty. And that's the way he loves to paint. Um, so he would treat that just like it's the big area because it all counts. He paints faces this big, you know what I mean? Maybe even that big. And so his technique is well worth looking at. And I would recommend that you follow him on Instagram too. It's five, you know, L-E-A-H-Y, Leahy. But anyway, talk about paying attention to details, you know. I don't paint miniatures like he does. Nowhere's near it. It wasn't something that I even really, um, I've, I've done like micro painting uh, for practice and fooling around, trying to paint a little tiny skull the size of like, you know, probably under uh, like three sixteenths of an inch to show the micron can do that, you know? But as far as my paintings, they're larger. And as you get older, you have different, you know, problems and such as my eyesight and things. So, um, you don't, uh, <laughs> you don't want to start doing miniatures at that point. So I'll work larger. And if I have more problems with that, I will just work even bigger and then I'll still be able to paint. But okay. So I'm cleaning out the bowl, the little side cup bowl, and I'm using the Windex and now I'm using water, just regular water, maybe back flush it a little. Just get it out. It's really the same color I'm going for it, but I'm gonna get right out of the bottle now, a drop a yellow or two. Always agitate your paint, Createx, wonderful Createx, illustration colors. They just added new colors to the illustration line that I saw a video on through Createx and it's just awesome colors, incredible colors. Okay, so this is really quite a difference from the mixture, right? This is, this is right out of the bottle. It is super bright. Okay, so turn the air down and I'm just going to take my flat base color and I'm gonna just put a little bit right where I'm gonna draw that and just brighten that yellow up in the center with a bit of a high saturation, just in the center, there we go. That's enough. I still want that lighter because it just kind of fades away. Just a little, little hit, you know? Okay, um, I can even probably just put a little glow on that jet body there when it drops down into the picture. All right. Um, I'm going to hit a little bit of this right out of the bottle on the outer edge of that. Giving it a little more intensity. Just a little bit. It's strong in here. Go right onto the body of the jet. It doesn't matter. Mine's a little dirtier from some overspray, but I'm not going to get like... I'm happy with my sky there. It's not bothering me. Um, but around the jet and different areas, it was like, no, I'm, that's not good enough. And I have to work real hard with these small areas. They, they're difficult. Okay, so my main concern right now is the actual um, sky. Okay, so what do we have here? We have like that orange color first thing i'm going to do is mix that up just orange is a killer of blue so the blue shift can be can can be possibly taken care of with that thought in mind so i'm going to make that original color which probably i might even have some from the other day the little lids come in handy because that's still wet then let's see what it looks like on paper Okay, so you save your paint. It's been about a week, right? And you see if that is the that's the color, but when I spray it, it will be lighter than that. So I will probably put a drop of white in there for covering power. Two drops fell into the thing because it might be a lot of water that I preserved this paint with. So I'm going to even put a drop of yellow in it 
which is like white. Yeah, it's a very light color on the color wheel, the lightest. And maybe one more drop of, a couple more drops because they come out fast, of white. So I've got a nice, it's not watery anymore. It's very thin, which is what I want to do. Kind of almost have an over-reduced color. If it's, if it's too over-reduced, then I will, I'll know by spraying it on a test. It's very, very liquidy. But I think by putting what I just put in it, yes, I changed the color a bit, but meaning the value of the original color, made it lighter. So I'm just spraying it out till it, I didn't clean out the yellow enough. So you can see it's not switched over. There it is starting to happen. And if you just do a little test here, let's see, I'll do it on the edge. Hold on one second. Okay, so that's the color. And then by having it on the edge, I could find out, oh, well, there it is up there a little bit. So I, could, I gotta move this. So I can spray over my erased clouds because they're knocked back into the orange, see? I erased them out so that I could not have a color shift, but then you gotta knock them back. Just your, your reference will tell you. So I'm just gonna spray that color from a distance and knock them right back into the picture. That's good. Uh, it's a little bit, this is a little oversaturated there, but I, I can get away with it. It's not a nightmare. Let's, let's try this area. Hold on a minute. I know it's under here. Okay, so I'm gonna just work off of this area. I'm spraying right on the jet, it doesn't matter, until I get some color. see some circular uh, areas that are not and just dust this in a little bit I don't know if I'm going to be successful with this I'm going to have to see okay so what I'm going to do and I don't have a problem with this I'm going to put a lot more white in that orange like I said orange should help me because this is actually lighter anyway so by bringing that new cloud down, I might end up getting what I want. Man, the airbrush holds a lot of paint. Hey, Jesus, hey, okay, how you doing? Okay. So. All right, so we've got lighter version, maybe? Let's try it, right over the top. Am I getting an ugly color? Yeah, I'm getting a color shift. There it is, right there. Don't like it, but I can go into the white area and kill those eraser marks. That's kind of the color there that I'm looking for, as far as the undercolor. Okay, go back and forth, it's opaque. It's not working here. So let's try to do 100% coverage. Okay, it's kind of a nice base color. This is a problem area right here, so I know we've got, I don't want to keep going up and taking out, so I'm going to just experiment with these things. So we've got this area, whoops, dry that baby, a fingerprint there now, there it goes, all right, so I'm going to spray over this for a minute and see what happens to it. It's opaque, so Maybe enough of it can at least take the chop, you know, get the edge off that one. Let's do it here. Let's just change that whole color with a lot of paint. And then bring the color back in. Um, I'm just going to be careful by the nose. I don't care if it goes on the jet. Hey, honey, how you doing? This is a repair. 
repair job. You know, fingerprints, uh, scratches, things like that, that just didn't work. And trying to redo the sky, redo the cockpit. Uh, there was some nicks and little things, and it was like not something I wanted to even post and show yet. Even though, in general, when I posted after the thing, I said, this is, I think I did. I said, this is my progress of my Facebook Live. And it looked good. It got a lot of likes and all. But I looked at it close up in the room, and I saw, besides the chi the chips from my fingernail, um, I saw I lost some of the shape of the jet here because I was trying to change the color, and I had not enough sunset inside the cockpit. That was my biggest complaint. And then I saw that, you know, there was just other areas that I was not happy with. So the jet can be, once you sharpen up the jet, bang, it comes right back. You know, most of this will look good again real quick. But um, I'll give an example of that when we work on the black, which I will protect, obviously, the yellow in there. Okay, that's my problem. I sprayed my orange and it went outside the cockpit and it was a darker orange line outside the cockpit, which looked horrible. And I was like, oh man, I gotta do this, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna lighten this color again. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but, oh, I think I just might've over lightened it like too much, but let's see. It's opaque, so I will go with it. I'm drying it and looking. Okay, that's not really the original that I just had was working, and this is shifting. So even though there's orange in it, it's giving me a problem right there. But this is coming out kind of good. So um, I wish I just didn't do that. Uh, let's see, how can I get around that? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go right back to the same color. I'm gonna put my orange back in it. And I'm gonna see what happens with a little burnt sienna. Into the orange. There probably was blue as a, you know, to, to gray down the uh, orange, but I'm putting a drop of burnt sienna in it. I do believe that was in the original. Okay, so it's getting darker again, but it's pretty saturated, so it needs that blue. Too bright, too close to the edge of the color wheel. I know you can't see me mixing, but that's what I'm doing on the side using a paintbrush I don't want a whole drop of blue into, you know, I just want to stir that blue in there so you get that brown kind of look. And that might work. I'm gonna put a little more blue, just a little more. And one drop of burnt sienna. Okay. So here we go. And of course, a couple drops of water just to have it more liquid. Oops, still old color in the gun. Got the spray pot right here, the cleaning station. Get rid of, you know. So as far as comments, on this live feed, I'm not seeing, like they don't just stay up. Now, I don't wanna to touch the wrong things on the screen and make something go away. But if, if I touch the screen, oops, there's a notification. Okay, touching the screen does nothing. There's, okay. How's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty good. I had to paint tonight because I was starting to paint, you know, anyway for the repairs. I said, I wanna make a YouTube video. I was gonna just upload it, you know, after I did it. That's always safer. <laughs> and then I said, why don't I, uh, you know, let everybody know, pop-up video. This won't crash with Tim. Tonight's Wednesday, right? This won't 
crash because I'll be done. So I consider his timing. Rid of that ugly blue. Okay, so that's that's working. I think there's going to be a nice. Yeah, there's going to be a. Well, it's actually lighter in the painting here, but I'm going to leave that. Okay, so now I've got the dark area. That's a problem, right? So it's not going to be exact. It's going to be what it is here because I do not feel like um, I'm going to get rid I'm over spraying on the yellow and I'm going right onto the body of the jet a little. That's all. Over here. Now I'll just kind of create a shift and hopefully have a little lighter color in here. I don't want to hide the jet. I don't want to lose that. Now I've got a lighter color here. Dry it so it doesn't look like it's shifts over there. Let's see. Yeah, it's not quite as light, but. You always look and then you gotta dry it. You're just breaking that up a little bit to receive um, the dark colors. I'm experimenting because I don't know what is going to happen here. Um, I know I'm bringing the, the browner colors up. So right now I'm going to take I'm going to take burnt burnt umber because I see a lot more brown in almost like an Indian red, pretty color. I see a lot of that color in the in this blackish color, you know. So let me just. Switch this out for a minute. All right. There's a scratch still. That won't go away because I have no white in there. So, all right. So I'm gonna put the brown on top of that. It's transparent, so I'm gonna go back now to the brown with white in it to make an opaque, more opaque brown. It will lighten it. It will definitely lighten it. On two, and maybe a drop of blue in there. Just to... no, no blue. Okay. All right. Where's my paper towels? Okay. So now the brown is lighter. Yeah, well, the kids come first, right? <laughs> so I understand that. Kids definitely come first. And I'm going to put a drop of orange in this mixture. Counterattack, any shifting, plus brown is kind of orange right comes from the orange world all right if you ask me what if I know what I'm doing I would have to say sometimes <laughs> trying to do a repair on a live video is kind of you know just a little, a little risky okay so the, the white is in there now let's see what happens to the same area getting too saturated for me it's too it's got a burnt sienna kind of look from the air pressure down now there's that patch i want to fix so let me show you the fingernail part look at that mess huh okay there's a little fingernail thing i'm going to air dry it spray it it's going away air dry it and like I said, there is a lot of brown. It's almost gone in that sky. 
Okay, so now I got a big brown, ugly thing going on there. Let's get that extended. My sky is definitely, <laughs> it's not the, uh, the lightness that I wanted. So I'm not done yet. I've got to still figure this out. Spread this brown over that black bottom there. Yeah. Just putting some brown color on top of the black. Which is gonna look lighter. Good streaky, let's see what it looks like, you know? Oops, sorry guys. All right, so, hmm, I got a little too dark there. Like a fool, I got dark. But I know that when I put the darkness in on the jet, things are gonna start to change. So I'm gonna take the orange now, and I'm gonna try to bury this over crazy saturated area. Maybe, because it's dark. I don't know what that could mean. Mist over a real light. Just knock it away from the picture. Gotta get lighter under that jet. So things are starting to work their way out there. Um, I'm gonna open my window in the studio because when you do when you do skies, it gets cloudy in here. <clears throat> a little fan on. for a minute. Just for a minute. So, how to treat the jet, let's see. First thing I could do, I've already, let's see. All right, so this goes, this goes this way a little bit. I don't think it goes up here, but oh, it's gonna get lost in, in this shape. This, so this curve up is not gonna matter. So, 
Hmm, what do I want to do? I hate that. Inspect. Ah, little white guy now. Easier to cover than the black. Let's just sit. Well, that's too stark of, a, of an orange, so I gotta be careful there with this color. All right. Just mist this out over that area. Bring this in, feather it a little bit. Just a little bit, because it's, it's the brighter, you know. Try to aim down. I'm oversaturating this on purpose right now because I lost it before, so. And I have high air pressure. Okay, just leave that like that for now. And start working on uh, finding the jet again a little bit. Do I want to use film? Hmm. I have to probably. So I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit. Once that darker jet is back in there. I'll be in better shape to, to see the contrast. Black right out of the bottle, but with reducer in it. Oh, it's cold outside. It's coming in quick. The other day it was 70 degrees or higher. Now we're dealing with freezing temperatures again. Okay, black. Now, where did they go? Very important. Everybody has to have one of these in your kit. Some kind of cookie. This is a sugar-free wafer cookie. I'm going to make you guys hungry now. All right, so I'm going to eat that. <laughs> no sugar, at least, right? Okay. So all I'm doing is taking black right out of the bottle. No, I'm not. Not when it's not opened. And it's very thick. And I will use a little, probably reducer on this, cut in a little bit more. 4012. Again, it's Create Text Paints. For people that will be looking at it later. <laughs> nice wafer cookie. This is a photorealistic painting of a wafer cookie. And I do a good job. Even my hand was painted, you know. Now that's good. That's a good cookie. Time for Windex. That opaque paint gets skunky in the, uh, uh, the micron, especially. I mean, it can it can do a number even in an eclipse, you know, t-shirt run, but not like this. I mean, the nozzle, two different nozzles, right? But it, opaque paint can really, you know, really mess up, especially with that white and that uh, t-shirt paints and stuff. Now I'll spray some water through it, do a little squirting of a streamline, flushing it, and put my black in. If it's not too watery, it's going to be an easy fix if it is. All right, all I'm going to do right now, so I'm just going to go into the body area here with no frisket, being very careful. 
just to get closer to the edge. I just want to see the impatient artist, you know. I just want to see that black airbrush aims strictly down. And you don't take no more chances there. So, do I, I don't have the original masking. I thought I was done with the painting. And that makes for a problem, but let's see what we can do with small areas. Okay. Um, I don't have the gold tape. If I had the gold tape, I could cut that right through it. Um, this calls for another cookie. Big decisions. <clears throat> Uh, the frisket that is satin finish, not the shiny one. I hate that one. Pull out a little bit. Just trying to start the corner here. <laughs> Another cookie. Well, I know everybody can get something at their own place, and if you were here, I'd be definitely sharing it with you. Uh, that was nice with the studio. Gosh, I can't get that started. Um, the studio that I had, it was my studio, and the kids wanted popcorn. I'm talking about the kids, like children, because we had kids and adults. If they wanted it, they could have it. You know, bring it in. We would make it right in the thing, right? Anybody want some popcorn? Just keep working, do your thing. But that was fun. We would even have art shows and parties and things like that. So we took a little bit of the glue off. And I'm going to just kind of put this piece of film over the cockpit and over the nose. I hate cutting frisket. And I will hopefully take this off without ruining my background, meaning white white paper tape to poster board. So, uh, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is make my cut comfortable, you know, especially with, now I should have Steve here, Steve Leahy, because my eyes are not happening. I don't want to push in deep because the cut cut into the board is a nightmare. Whoops. Uh, I think I missed. Let's see what I got. I'm just going to take a section out here. Yeah, like I think. Oh, that's right. Okay, so did I connect that? Did I cut deep enough? These are the things that make you go, hmm. Okay, I lost the piece there, but it did cut it. And then I just take that down and open that. Now, as far as the cockpit, we're gonna protect that right here. things go quicker I mean I have the post notes but they're pretty quick I have transfer tape too that I could tear a big sheet off and just protect the sky this works good because it's got the super sticky
kind of going a long way here. I do have the chance for Dave. But I did all this already, right? <laughs> On the first video. Okay. I didn't cut there yet. That got messed up. So I'm going to just kind of pull the frisket back like that. Oh, I hope I did this right. <clears throat> Micro airbrushing, right, for most people. Am I protected? No. Yes and no. Overspray has its way. It can go anywhere. So I'll just overkill it. Don't want no more problems. Film is all here. And sometimes it can even get, I know this is getting a little overkill, but sometimes, just so you know, the frisk, there can be a problem like in the immediate area, sometimes. Usually the, the post notes do the job, but I already have problems on this painting, so I'm just gonna double up a little bit. All right, here we go. Check the, okay, so we've got that. That's protected. I don't want to spray on the frisket either. That's protected. <clears throat> right along here. That's all protected. air dry. I'm just hitting the air on that. here just working my way back onto the jet body I'll surrender these few post notes no problem there obviously didn't leak through like I said I, I do not like frisket I'm not a fan <laughs> any kind of cutting out you know but okay so let's just see see that this kind of frisket now I see something very bad here a lousy cut I don't know what that is wait a minute can't be that lousy that looks like somebody <clears throat> looks wavy how do I do that okay I'm assuming this probably has to do with my eyesight, which I'm dealing with, you know, bad things lately. So I'm going to paint till I drop, you know, paint till I can't paint. But I better be quiet because it looks like it's trying to catch up with me quicker than I thought. That's nice. Okay. Now, what is going on down here? <laughs> Good grief. Really? That can't be my cut. It is my cut. All right. So I'll go this way. I don't care if I gouge it a little bit. Well, I do, but it's black. I hope I cut it deep enough. There's a little sliver. 
What's going on here? Guys, I got to turn it. I got to see the actual groove that I'm not getting. I think I might have cut that area. Nope. Do not know, but I know that if I take this off and I have a little wiggle in the area, I can turn around and take a take a shield and do something that way. So because I don't really know how bad my cut was, whoops, right here. air dry because I really don't know I mean I could do that well that's better it's a lot better um, there's something not right here though just a smidge I'm gonna go up no I'm gonna go down into the painting. I should hire somebody to do my frisket cutting, right? One-eyed willy here. <laughs> That's what I'm working with. I, I was working with one eye my whole career. And then I had problems with my good eye. And that's what's going on. All right, so the unveiling. I'm just going to see what I did. Got to be careful with those fingernails. You can always go back in and... Oh, a little chip there. Yep. So that's where the misalignment is. That's really de dead on on the top. Um, hmm. I'm going to touch that up carefully another way because... If I keep cutting, it's such a sliver. Let me try one more time. I can't, I can't really see it. So I'm gonna come at that from another direction. Darn. Oh, that was on there from before. Okay. All right, so let's see. I got the nice sharpness there. And I've got a little touch up still to do. I could try to move the frisket. Let's try that. Is the frisket cut good? Drop it down a smidge. I bet you somebody out there that's watching was saying, just drop your, your frisket down a little. The curve is already there, right? It's like, what am I thinking? There we go. All right. So that, that will work for that. Now, I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to waste Frisky here. <laughs> but just for the sake of argument, I'm going to just continue on. And get some more of the body painted, touched up. Over here is a repair. That's all these shapes that are, they got messed up from the sky. Sky color came in and took out some of the wonderful details of that. All right, so what do we got? We're an hour in, so, all right. That worked. I just pulled the frisket down. You know, you stumble through, right? You just try to do what you can. In my case, I have a handicap. I'm not trying to use it for an excuse all the time, but it's it's there. 
and so I have to deal with it, and so be it. Whoa, a little air pressure there, huh? Okay, so for now, I'm going to take the frisket off. The part that I'm going to repair off camera is this part. Because it's, it's tedious cutting, I want to get on the right angle with my lighting and <clears throat> maybe even sit, you know, under a, my OT lamp and have this on my lap. So like when the frisket's on there, if this is on my lap on a clipboard or, or just on my lap, and I have the frisket, and I have this special lighting, I can, I can get in there and follow the shapes perfectly then, because then I could see by going like this, I could see the groove of where I cut, you know. And is that frisket on there, so? Yep, a little piece that missed right there. So what I'll do with that is just use my shield. Oh. Okay. Zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, let's see. Okay, guys, it's time for when when you have when you have to think, you have to have some kind of enjoyment, right? <laughs> Another wafer cookie. <laughs> Right there. I'm going to use a very thin shield. I already have it out. Got to find the shape. Might not need the big one, but no, it's not that round, so I don't have to worry about that. All right. Do the big one. I'll find this shape somewhere in here. Maybe. Nope. Nope. No round. No round. It's not round. Give me a second. I'm just go get some gun shield. I'm gonna use my star shield from Drew. Wonderful little, you know, when you do the, uh... oh, I'm going to use frisket, uh, not frisket, I'm going to use post note, brand new piece, because then the glue's on there. I think it goes right into there. And if I just stay close, I'll be good. As far as overspray, going too far. That's what we want. That's a little tiny pain in the neck problem, <clears throat> but I could get the sky color in there and just take that off. This is this is a pain, but I cut it bad, so I'd rather have the white. Yeah, we just move that around a little. And then there is going to be a little, a little do flicky here. Um, I did use the microns on there, but the microns actually could cut in, you know, the ink. It could cut in to, like, have a reaction with the, the paint. So, just because I said that, I'm going to get a micron out and see what happens with touching up. Maybe a number. Try a number two, very tiny little, you know, tip on it. And if I could get in here, so right, somewhere right around here is the little guy that comes down. It's not there. I wish it was, but it's right 
there's the windshield, the, the cockpit, and it's right before it. So it's right around here. And there's that little shape. Okay, and that was just put in there just nicely. And now the cockpit has airbrushing, you know, not just an outline, an ugly outline, but it is gonna have things inside there. Like I could start right here. Now that my airbrushing is in there, I could just take this without putting frisket on it. It goes up to about there. And I made it a little too fat before, so I'm just gonna make a skinnier version. It's not hurting the painting, okay? And then they have the paintbrush by, by um, Micron. Uh, this one is actually, I buy this, I don't like the Micron paintbrushes. I don't, I think they get too wiggly and they break down, but the B by um, Faber-Castell is what I mix into my little kit. It's got a nice little paintbrush point on it. And then I could come in here and fill in an area quicker. Like that. And then you can top up that edge with the tiny one. This is what I do with my cartoons and stuff. I have fun with inking. Can get really in a groove sometimes with that inking and this does go up to the top just about it goes right to here so i'm gonna just put it in now if this starts not if the paint starts building up on the tip of the micron bail it be you know clean it on paper or do something whoops i got a little wiggle here and make that nice and sharp I don't want that to get much fatter than that. Okay. Yeah, see, it starts putting holes in it if you're not careful. All right, that'll work for now. And then there's gonna be this little dude back here. I turned the mic on, it wasn't coming out, the, the actual color because it starts to react but if I can get something done with it I'll be happy so that's going to be there oh my my thing froze okay sorry about that I have no control over that all right so it seems like that black is even blacker oh no it works good with this but it's not good there so let's just get the shields out and see what else we can touch up without like I said that's going to be fixed off camera but if I get this I can line this up better than I can line the frisket up at least on small stuff you know so I'm going to just take my post notes I buy lots of them and I'm going to kind of just work little areas at a time just to get through the blackness of the jet I hold so many of these. They start sticking to you and sticking to themselves. Okay, there's a little guy in there, so I want to go that that way. I can spray in that area. And down because of that. dry and then peak peak guys it's a quick fix right so there it is now I can go here touch up city <laughs> that's what this is I still see the orange
careful, right? Gotta be careful. It's working out. I know it looks um, like it's all from, from what I'm seeing with the lighting in the room. It really is, you know, not going to shine like that. Um, some areas from angles, because the end result is I spray it with a clear satin finish, and you can't see any of that. So that's not a problem. And I, I don't know if I have to touch that area up yet. I could try. Maybe I can get rid of some of that shine. These are the sticky, and they don't stay sticky. You know, you just throw them away. They don't buy the post notes that don't say sticky on it. Where is it? Right there. Super sticky. That's what I, I bl the other ones, the airbrush have, has blown them off the picture. Like, uh-oh, <laughs> didn't have the right glue on it or something. So I'm just going to paint this area one more time just because <clears throat> maybe that little weird shine will go away. If it doesn't, doesn't matter because I'm going to I'm going to spray this with a clear satin finish. Okay, so we've got that. Whoop! I'm gonna come over here and just kind of do that. Okay. I know I'm not seeing a lot of comments and stuff, so you guys talk amongst yourselves, or whatever. But um, the comments don't stay. They, go, they appear and disappear. At least that's what I'm seeing. They just don't stay where I can read them. Maybe there's a way to do it, but that's what I'm experiencing right now. There is a thing here called comment. Let me touch that. Top, tap, top chat messages. Uh, may be this not be visible live chat all message. Let me try live chat. Oh, there they are. Okay They are disappearing again, so let me touch it again. It's the live chat Okay, you're saying you were looking at the microns, but now that you've said they wiggle a lot. I will second that now well, they don't really wiggle they that's me, <laughs> you know, uh, they're, they're perfect. They, you know, like I said, I could go in here. I see a little wiggle right on this little freehand micron thing I did. Okay. And I could just kind of tape that off and then go with my paintbrush and go right up to it and go right on the, the paper. Then I get a perfect, so you can use edging for, you know, that perfect line work okay don't give up on the microns they're you know i'll show you being that you know i've got a little while that i'm staying on here let me get one of my uh okay so we'll try somebody's day let's try let us try i hope it fits in the picture um, I got to protect my painting, so let me get that down. So this is a little bit of a talk about microns, and I'm not talking about the micron airbrush. I'm talking about, you know, this is starting to look good. I'm starting to be happy with that. Okay, um, so let me get what I do all day with these things. Okay, so Mickey's here. He was traced, you know. Can I draw Mickey? Yes, but... Now they sell, they sell the newer, like number 12. You know, you have the finer microns. This is a number 12 and it is fun. When you get the bigger cartoons like this one and you just say you're in bed and you're got, you're, I have a neck pillow, you know, I prop the pillows up and I listen to YouTube, watch YouTube or whatever, music or whatever you're doing. And I get relaxed. Usually the angle is like this. And then I turned the, <laughs> look what I just did. Uh, we'll get a new picture. Um, and boy, do I got pictures. <laughs> it's ridiculous how many pictures I've got. Okay, so let me see what I, okay, this guy's cool. <laughs> Everybody likes him. <laughs> All the sound effects, right? <laughs> so you just 
get relaxed. Th this is probably too big, but I'm not going to use this one, but let me get a number eight. But they do have a 12 coloring book size line work. Okay, so now I'm going to get a number eight. Here's my kit. Close distance two. Okay, so this is an art bin. I have a, one for pencils and one for the... And that's my portable... When I take my wife to the doctor or we go somewhere where it's going to be boring and I don't feel like... I bring this. And then I bring my clipboard. I put it all in a carry bag. Sitting in a doctor's office for an hour or whatever. Uh, it used to be, you know, with the pain doctor. Because we both went to that doctor. It was a long time before COVID hit. And then... Now it's a lot of televisits, you know, telemed. Uh, so I just, this isn't the angle I usually draw on. But what I'll do, it's relaxing. It's like, it's like you get the really feel of like being a pinstriper or something. The line work is nice and you, I have a little bit of tremors, you know, but you don't see no tremors in those lines. And then what I'll do is for certain curves, I can turn some of my lap Okay, and I can go after lines like this one because my wrist wants to naturally go this way. And you can take care of all those curved lines and look for them while you've got this kind of like an animation desk turned, you know? And then you could, I probably would go like this on my lap. Now I've got this curve, natural curve. Just a little bonus stuff here of some fun things to do besides airbrushing. Okay, and then that. that. It's just a natural curve. So that, that curve is a little fighting me, so I would turn, it's just on my lap usually, and then I get that perfect curve that I love, and it goes with my hand. I don't, I don't usually have to use the two fingers, but I'm, I'm not in position. I don't want it to go off. Usually it's one, one finger sitting there watching the TV with one eye. And, <laughs> doing what I need to do. So that's that's what I do with the, uh, and then you can do a fill in, you just do your little circle like that. And you can get a smaller one if you want and you just color it in. I won't be on this line, just showing you. The microns are great for that. I'll zoom in on it for a little bit, okay? So we'll try this now. And this is what you do, say so I, so I airbrushed him, right, on a clay board or some kind of board. Then you can outline him, not with a paintbrush, but with the microns. When I was a sign painter, I used to have to outline cartoons with my quill, my little skinny, you know, gray squirrel hair. <laughs> and uh, I got good at it. It, it was, this is easier because these are... You know, you can really get a control of the lines. And then you want a point. So you want a point, you just pull away and get a little point like that. So that's what I do with the microns. And you really, after a while, when you start doing it, you get really fast. Like you start becoming a machine almost like, you know. So let me just see if the comments, if anybody cares about this. Call me Micron Bill, yeah, or One-Eyed Willie. That's a good one too. I'll spread that around so much everybody start will start calling me that. I hope I just stay at least the one eye, because that's the problem. The one good eye <laughs> is not behaving. I never thought about it as a. I mean, I did when I was younger. I thought about it because I got air airplane. I was in a body shop and it was some kind of can of paint paint remover that got me it exploded because it didn't have a screw on lid and it just got me so that that fill in this is the last thing i'll show you this fill in would be the brush all right so then you take the brush and then you can start filling in big areas quicker like that gotta be careful i'm on a funny angle here so i don't want to go outside the line and like say you're doing the nose you can really push that brush down and you could get a wide covering like that if I went outside the line a little because I'm not like I said I'm not in position 
to do this the way I normally do it. So the way I would fix that is nobody cares if his nose is a little bit bigger. And just go back through with your regular um, pen. So yeah, I, it works good. And you can use it with the airbrush carefully. At least I have. I know, I know when you airbrush, I got a poster board and I would outline a cartoon or something. It, it always did good on the dry paint. And then I would just really fix that up a little bit. See, I'm not dealing with frisket, so I'm not dealing with that invisible line that is so hard. And then you can make points by just going like that, like this. You can just come out and do a dagger strip by pulling away. I pulled away too far. And on and on and on. So that's what I do for fun with the microns. They are fun too. Because you, you're just relaxing and you're pulling lines and you and you get you know, and then you can draw them, you know, you don't have to trace them. Um, I got a lot of them. I mean, I've got thousands of drawings because I'll be doodling all these all the time. Just a little. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I got a few drawings here. Check this out. The thickness. Ready? Clipboard after clipboard after clipboard. You can't really see it too good, but there it is. Yeah, there's a few drawings there. <laughs> it's like six clipboards. This is heavy, too. And there's so many drawings that I have ready. Because once I found out, I can... You know, kill time and not even care, like if I'm at a doctor appointment or something. With, I can kill time and, and not care. And it's like they're, all of a sudden they're coming out, you know, and saying, okay, you're next. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm finishing up Bugs Bunny. <laughs> it's like you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about the TV that's on inside the office. It's a real nice thing. Um, you're not focused on anything but just pulling lines. Okay, so... My painting, where did I put it? Okay. Back to this real quick. I think. So, that. so while these colors are out in the studio, right? They're mixed. So then say I feel like airbrushing and I, I want to take a break from this. This is in the same color world, right? Now, this, this painting is a challenge because it's, again, if this was huge, I could do this better. But that glow right there, and these are the same pa palette, right, just about, I um, overshot and I made an ugly mess right here. This is a nice, softer, beautiful fade that even changes the blue cloud to purple almost. So I, I know how to do that, but I, I didn't, I made, I made a mistake. There's a glow on the water. And then that, that glow there is actually waiting for the white area. I have the white area right there. Thank you, appreciate it. So that's, you know, there's my color matches. Okay, so this is glo a gloss, but looks like I gotta get a little darker for the top coming down. There's my clouds. The hard edge will be turned into a soft edge. Uh, just working off that edge and with opaque paints, you can do it. You can't do it with transparency. And you, you can turn that into that, you know. And yeah, slowly but surely, you know, working it. These colors aren't right all in here. Very sliver part of water that it's very skinny. And then that golden, that golden beautiful area is reflecting that on the beach. And I want to capture that. So I'll probably take this out, clean that up, and then spray that all in. But if I have this palette, and I feel like painting, you know, for a number of hours during the day, some paintings are of the same palette. So it's like, well, put that aside, and while he got the yellow in the gun, let's get this, you know, or let's get that done. So I'll get a little brave here. I won't get too close to the edge. Too much air. You could see once this jet is sharp again, like you see, 
then all of a sudden everything else contrast wise comes together and that that's confusing me <laughs> all right. oh yeah if you end up peeling the back off and you've got a sticky see this is the nice front if you have a stickiness here just take one of these if you lose this piece and it's all curled up on you and just stick it over it like this just so that you don't have that glue whoops crooked it in your way now i can just lift that smooth it out now that's not sticky but that's no good anymore these are the this is the front okay and if you're really bored you can make an animation flip book you know <laughs> okay so a little bit more i'll do and finish this off camera but for people that are on youtube that are going to see this later yeah if you're interested and you know if you want to subscribe to the channel that you're on do so because i'm trying to put a lot more on here It'll be different things. Might be short little videos that are 20 minutes long, not this long live stream. It's all kinds of stuff. I think I got 100 videos on there. And this is where the micron can come in and just get in close. Don't go near the edge, though. <laughs> Just try to get it as nice as you can without ruining the edge. Okay, here. Okay, so you can see here what I have to do, but you can see the contrast of that jet. What I'll do off camera, uh, let's see, the bottom. That is going to be like sepia. So to end the video, I will put sepia in the gun. If I spray black here, that's, that's not going to work. And I will work, I'll still work on this area. I, I was showing um, how I was getting a little bit of a cloud, like this cloud. Get, let me get that better photograph. Okay, so it's that little yellow cloud there. Okay, so that one there, okay. I can just go in. I think I'll do it in a higher area just to I'm just I'll do this one again it's kind of lost it's showing up when I sprayed over it I'm just making a little dagger shape there and then I just took my not my aggressive eraser but oh yeah don't forget to snap these lids on there uh, yeah the the white erasers that have a good friction but they're soft and then just erase on the tape camera's going to shake and hold it oops just keep pushing it you can over lighten it you know if you do it without having the tape unless you use them like what do you call it the little um tombos then you can Tombos don't have the aggressiveness, though. So I'm going to go a little bit more here and towards the back. And I am going to use... I think I'm going to use the aggressive eraser for a second because that wasn't coming off. But I'm going to just use it really with a light touch. So make sure you clean the tip. And then just sand it. Just go real light and sand that color off a little bit. It might be a little bit much, but let's look at it. And then you get a little cloud that needs to be buried a little bit. The, those were real stark. And then, and that's the undercolor waiting to make a cloud that won't ruin the painting with overspray and all that other garbage, you know? So, um, yeah, this is a, let's try this for a minute. This is a round shape do not want to cut the frisket out anymore now the frisket this is not working so i'm going to turn the pen be very 
very careful. Yeah, it's drying. It's, it's, it's like I, I need that to be obviously a little bigger. Probably the paintbrush would be safer. Paintbrush style. But will I make a... Will I get it to the edge? I'm not going to get too close to that edge. But I can fix that there. And so there you got this filling in that area. You got that little point coming off there that is, oh gosh, it's, it's like that. It's hard to see the focus, but I'll show you the bigger one. It's just a little, it's like these guys, these little things that are, uh, the points to the shapes. So I'll do that with this one, you know, I'll come out and I'll tape it off and I'll make that perfect. That's what I do for my problem. And maybe I would do it anyway, I don't know, you know, as far as finding these shapes again. And this has a nice little point and it goes up a little bit like that. And then to fill that in, aim the airbrush in. So those little things are, oh, I should have that closer, I'm sorry guys. But anyway, you get the, the drift, you get that nice little, whoo, there we go. Get that shape. I just got to get that a little straighter. Still got some touch-ups. They got to be perfect. And I will I will make it like that's perfect right there. That's not acceptable yet. So I will, you know, I'm fudging around, trying to touch this up, trying to work it. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. I think when you hit the like button um, or comment, it gets more activity on the channel. And sharing it too, sharing, you know, something on, whoops, sorry, <laughs> trying to do, um, so yeah, when you subscribe and hit the notification bell, then you get notified when I upload or live stream or whatever. I don't know how to use YouTube really great, but I did just start about months, so many months back having commercials. Like you start to look at my video and all of a sudden there's a, um, Toyota commercial or Samsung, you know, the phone or really cool. It makes you feel like, you know, maybe it's going to get monetized eventually. I have like 1,500, you know, subscribers only, but that's better than when I first started. <laughs> so I'm going to probably, you know, call this video. I hope the touching up, obviously I got more to do still. And I, oh, yeah, I was going to show you the sepia. Sepia is not black, so it's still got a nice, you know, kind of darkness. It's dark. You can get black looking. You mix it with some burnt umber, and you get the perfect mixture. But the burnt umber is already there. So I'm going to just put it in the gun with a little, um, get rid of that color. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of um, reducer in the color cup, just like the guys do with the top feeds. And now that thick pink, I stir it the same way where you just kind of bubble it up. Okay, test it on the side. Get that black out of there. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to just take the, the darker color. If you look at the right-hand side over here in my painting is... I'm sorry about that glare. Let me, let me see something here for a minute. Nope. Oh, it's the lights. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so now you look at this, and it's very dark over here, and then it goes back to brown and back to the dark. So you, we'll put the uh, small picture above has a better and even some of the colors are different uh values or whatever but okay 
So I'm going to come on from this side, deepen that. It's not black though. Then I could start going up a little higher and repair some areas that are. And there's the darkness over there. And this side, not, it's not going out here. It's just kind of going down and over this way. Mine's a little darker. And that would be it, giving it more richness, more, you know, there'll be some oranges in here. And I'll be playing with it, but. And then, of course, I'll do the cockpit more with the uh, a little piece of film, and I'll do that that wonderful little fade that is going inside. It's not a hard line, like I said. So that's kind of like it for now. Um, painting is what it is. You're welcome. Thanks for uh, popping on here and a little bit sensitive with this zoom here. There's the painting. There's, uh, there's what I got. So fixing things, making things better. And I'm not going to post this yet on anything until I get it to where I really like it. But anyway, hopefully get something out of it. Um, like I said, there's some areas in here that I need to be lighter. And I'll probably use a special correction type color to, to work that so I don't have the shift. Okay, so thanks guys. And I'll see you all. And, and then the regular YouTube followers that see this later. See you all guys in the next video. I'll see everybody else on Facebook live uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on my personal channel, Bill Snegan. And that's S-N-E-G-O-N, which is on my Imagine Airbrush by Bill Snegan. So you can find my name. Just go to my personal page and you can uh, get, you know, you know, get get with me on the live. I'll be painting the lioness part two, uh, black and white. So, all right. So thanks a lot. God bless you guys. Be safe and good night.